I want to talk about what products are available in the stores right now. Um, it seems that most of them come from corn. Uh, the shelves are filled with uh, taco shells, cornmeal, even pre-cooked cornmeal. This one cooks faster and it's a little softer. If you've never eaten these things before, and it seems that nobody wants these things, but because there's plenty of them in the store. There's no brown rice in any store, not even online, not even on Amazon. Anyway, the trick to making things with cornmeal is first you mix it in cold water, then you put it in the pan, and then you stir it for, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes. And then it turns into like a porridge, like a breakfast cereal. But you don't have to use it like that. I mean, you can add salt to it, and it's just like having rice or mashed potatoes. You can add uh, some kind of milk or non-dairy milk and uh, honey or, or maple syrup to it, and, you know, it's like a breakfast food or like a dessert. So um, another thing I see in the stores, uh, different types of flour, and they're not all expensive. This one is garbanzo bean flour. And you'd be surprised. I mean, you could put it in a cake, you could put it in anything, and it adds a lot of protein to it, and it doesn't taste weird. And another corn product is grits. Same thing, mix it in water, cold, put it on the stove, stir it a while, cook it on a medium heat, and it's done. Now there's certain stores like the Big W, that sell once in a while. Most of the time, you see enormous. Uh, it's about uh, it's about this big. It's like two giant bunches of collard greens, and it'll take you about an hour or so at home to wash them, cut them, look through them, and then you just boil them. And it, it's so easy. And when it cools off. You could, uh, hopefully you save containers, so you could put them in containers and freeze them. They taste so good. They don't need all the traditional, you know, meat flavorings and, and et cetera, et cetera in it. Um, bones, onions, whatever. whatever. Um, that just adds calories and it adds time and it's healthy just like it is. It's easy to grow. All leafy greens are easy to grow. What else? What else is in the stores that nobody wants? There's still white rice in the stores. I would never believe that brown rice is so popular. I didn't know, but it is. And, oh, toilet tissue. I still have toilet tissue because I like to buy things in bulk so I'm prepared. But I'm thinking, you know, in a few weeks when I run out, uh, maybe I'll have to cut up some old sheets, old clothes, and use that. And, of course, after I use it, throw it in the trash can, not in the toilet. What else can you use? They don't seem to make phone books anymore. Otherwise, I would tell you to take a page of the phone book and, uh, you know, go like this and, you know, soften it up and use that and then put that in the trash can. There are places like dollar stores and big lots that sell a package of napkins for like 99 cents. And um, you could use that, but again, put it in the trash can, not in the toilet. It also helps if you get some kind of squirt bottle. Maybe you save an old shampoo bottle or a frozen lemon juice bottle and you use that on yourself before you clean yourself with a, with a napkin because that will get some of the, uh, the cells of the solid waste and liquid waste off you. These things online, uh, videos that talk about bidets, I don't like the idea of them because the stream is shooting up with some type of force and I'm thinking it can you know, spread bacteria and also put the bacteria in the wrong place in the front instead of in the back. 
So I think a squirt bottle is best. There are cultures that use a like a, a mini watering can and they pour that on themselves every time they use the toilet. What else? I'm perfecting my uh, mask making uh, sewing projects. Um, very few people in my neighborhood wear a mask when they take a walk. I do because you never know when you're going to run to a very talkative neighbor who stands much too close to you. So even if you're going to a place that's not so crowded, just you know, leave the mask around your neck so you can pull it up when you need it. I haven't been to the store in more than a week because I'm trying now to go once every two weeks because, you know, why spend the extra money on gasoline and extra time? This is spring. It's planting time. It's a busy time of year for anyone who has a garden. And I've had people saying to me online that I shouldn't eat stuff that's GMO. These particular uh, uh, taco shells, now it only has lime, corn, flour, palm oil, and salt. But, but they're very honest. At the bottom they say, produced with genetic engineering. Okay, well, you know, you, you can't control everything. And even when you buy a product that has a sign on it that says non-GMO, you don't know if it's true. And it might just be partially true. Maybe they don't use artificial fertilizer, but they use the insecticide. Maybe they don't use the insecticide, but they use the fertilizer. They're not telling you everything. So what you're buying with that high cost product is you're buying a promise. They're promising you that it's, you know, totally the healthiest organic, non-GMO, whatever. And you just don't know if it's true. So, you know, I think basically it comes down to our immunity are you feeding yourself things that that lower your immunity like alcohol caffeine red meat fried foods a lot of salt a lot of fat and the big one sugar you can you can get yourself used to healthy healthy simple basic food you know, the tastier you make your food, the more you'll eat. It's not supposed to be this, this big taste sensation orgy. You know, you're supposed to be eating because you're hungry and you want to, have, want to be strong and healthy and have good immunity. You don't have to have this big uh, fiesta, extravaganza, you know, uh, banquet, you know. You know, food is, that's not what food is for. You'll get used to it. And people, people who have um, very, very strong things uh, in their habits, like, like alcohol and sugar and cigarette smoking, they've, they've dulled their taste buds. So I understand that the basic, simple health food doesn't taste good. I understand that. But if you give your taste buds time to recuperate, you know, let's say a few weeks, it says, uh, the experts say that it takes 21 days to develop a new habit, three weeks. After that, this food, all this basic, simple stuff will taste wonderful, and you'll feel good that, hey, I put a spoonful of this very plain boiled food in my mouth, and it actually tastes good. You know, our taste buds are supposed to be sensitive, not desensitized. So think about what I'm saying. I have no, pro I have no conflict of interest. I have no agenda. Just to do my duty, do good, and share what I've learned. And if I'm mistaken about anything or I've forgotten anything, let me know. Here I am. I'm alone living with a dog. I talk to him, I sing to him, I bless him, I pray for him, but he's a dog. Maybe he knows more than I do and he's just not allowed to say. We don't understand these things until we go to the next level. So 
Think about what I'm saying.